It's Wednesday, December 2nd, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Hundreds of Barbadians may have to rethink their old year's night celebrations. That's because health authorities are concerned about the popular practice of gathering at public beaches to watch fireworks in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Director of the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit, Ronald Chapman, told Barbados Today that plans would be formulated to help address that scenario. He said the unit would also be keeping a close eye on all year's night parties. We are aware of what, as, I, as you would have heard, we are aware and we are concerned about the issue. We have not started putting uh, definite plans in places yet, but that's going to come pretty soon. Um, it may be in the form of a uh, PR campaign. It may be in the form of other, other, other measures, but we're going to have to look. That's something we have to look at very, very seriously because... Um, it's a traditional tradition. You go to the beach, you go with your family, you put on your picnic basket, and you watch the fireworks at night. Um, and some beaches are more crowded than others. And we would want to, first off, before we put any strategy in place, I would like that business to know is that if you can watch the fireworks from home, watch them from our home. If you can avoid the beaches or any crowded place, please do so. If you're going to go to the beach, please stay away from the crowds as much as physically possible. Um, crowded places are not what you want to. You don't want to be ending the, 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 the um, or starting the new year with issues with COVID. So we want to be able for persons to be aware of the surroundings, be constantly aware that we are still on the, we are still on the threat. The risk, the risk may not be as high as other places, but it exists and we want you to be careful. Labour Minister Colin Jordan tells employers not to mistreat workers or they risk the island descending into disorder and discontent. He made the impassioned plea in Parliament yesterday as he expressed concern about the manner in which some managers were treating employees in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Labour Minister was speaking during debate on the Central Bank of Barbados Bill 2020. I also say to employers and managers and i have to include managers because i know not just recently but i i do know that sometimes managers try to be rougher than the owner to make a point and sometimes they, they treat those who used to be their peers who they supervise as trash, not because the owner of the establishment wants them treated as trash, but because they have now arrived and they hold the keys. And so they may be hurt back to a point where they feel they should also be wearing the cork hat and wearing a short kitty pants. Those days are over because that kind of action breeds disorder. When people and I notice of Barbadians, and I've, I've kind of thought through comparing Barbados to some of our, even some of our Caribbean neighbors. When Barbadians react, it is usually when they're being pushed to a certain point. And I want to say to employers, as I say to workers, let us remember that Barbados' claim to fame we have gotten to where we are, mainly, not only, mainly because we have managed, at least in the post-independence era, to maintain a certain level of order. The Leeward Islands Airline Pilots Association has adopted a wait and see approach on court proceedings that could determine the financial future of its members in Barbados and other territories. When asked by Barbados Today to give an update on the issue surrounding terminated pilots, the Alpers president, Patterson Thompson, said he was waiting until the court process was completed. Our Emmanuel Joseph tells us more. Thompson said he will make a statement on the way forward for the pilots when the court process is completed. He told Barbados Today he did not want to say or do anything that could derail the process or that could negatively impact any outcome for his members. He contended that if there was already a plan in place and those behind the plan were, as he put it, playing the fool, then that would be a different story. 
but he said that right now he cannot give an update on the severance or other outstanding monies or the pilots. Patterson told Barbados Day that why he feels the pain and suffering which his fellow pilots are experiencing having not been paid for months is a matter before the course and one he wished he could speed up, but he can't. The airline is currently under a court-approved administrator who is overseeing the restructuring of the Antigua-based company. And the Lealpa president is contending that whatever update there may be is exactly what the administrator said. Now, speaking on a recent ABS television show in Antigua, the administrator, Cleveland Seaforth, told viewers that the 120 days which he had to submit a report to the High Court on the findings for the way forward for the Liat company had expired on November the 20th after starting the work in July this year. C4 said that report was submitted to the court but is not recommending the liquidation of the company. Instead, he said he was asking for some more time for the discussions with prospected investors to take place, explaining that sometime soon the matter is going to be heard by the High Court and then the court is going to advise on the next steps of the administration process. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. There's regional and international news after this short break. From our regional neighbors now, 26 Haitians who have been detained in Guyana have been ordered deported by a magistrate. However, an attorney at law says the move is unlawful, as the CARICOM nationals were never charged and taken before the law courts. We get more in this report from News Source, Guyana. Magistrate Shirtle Isaacs has granted an order for the deportation of the 26 Haitian nationals who have been detained by the Guyana government. The order was granted although the Haitians were not charged for any crime and never appeared before the court. Attorney Darren Wade, who is representing the interests of the Haitians, said the move is unlawful and a direct violation of the rights of the Haitians. And I am of the firm view that the order that was granted by Madam Shardell Isaac is unlawful and illegal because the Haitians were not taken before the court. The right to be ordered. The police is contending that the Haitians acted in contravention of 69A of the Immigration Act. But there were no opportunity for, the, for those allegations to be placed before the Haitians and for them to give a representation, for them to be heard. So I am of the view that we will respond to this and the state of Guyana continue to violate the Asian rights. The Attorney General's Chambers was expected today to respond to a motion in the High Court that was filed by Wade on behalf of the Association of Haitian Nationals in Guyana. That motion sought to get the government to produce the Haitians to the court. The Attorney General's Chambers never responded to the motion, but instead the government moved to the lower court and sought the deportation orders. And finally on the international front, a panel of advisors to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on Tuesday voted for healthcare workers and residents of long-term care facilities to be the first in line to receive initial doses of COVID-19 vaccines when they become available. More in this CBS News report. As cases continue to surge across the country, folks continue to wait in line, some for hours, just to get a COVID-19 test. This, as tonight we're learning who the CDC is recommending to be the first to get vaccinated. Today, an official roadmap to ending this pandemic, as members of a federal advisory committee officially voted 13 to 1 on who should be the first in line. First up, our healthcare heroes and nursing home patients ravaged by the virus. 24 million Americans who could start getting the first doses in about two weeks. Once approved by the FDA, the first batch of Pfizer vaccines is expected to be delivered to hospitals on December 15th. 
the first batch of the Moderna vaccine a week later. From there, states will use this roadmap to get the vaccine in the arms of Americans, which is expected to take about five months. Dr. William Schaffner is an advisor for the committee that voted today. What are you still concerned about? Delivering it in the United States alone to 330 million people will have to be reassuring, will have to be persuasive. There are people who are skeptical, lots of people. The next phases, expected to begin in January, will focus on the 87 million essential workers, teachers, police, firefighters, and workers in food production and transportation. Phase 1C will include adults 65 and older and those with high-risk medical conditions, more than 153 million people. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.